Hello, I'm Waldo Perez. I'm the president and CEO of Neolithium Corp. I'm here to talk about the origin of lithium in brine deposits. This is the world famous lithium triangle. Over 50% of the lithium resources of the world are hosted in brines trapped in salt flats in this region. It encompasses three countries, Bolivia, Chile, and Argentina. There are four lithium mines in operation today, two in Chile, two in Argentina, and one more in construction also in Argentina. There is also a handful of projects with feasibility studies that are getting close to construction stage. Tres Quebradas, 3Q project, located on the southern end of the lithium triangle, is one of the most advanced of these projects. Salars, or salt flats, are basically dry lakes. In regions with extreme evaporation, lakes can dry out, and once the water is totally evaporated, a chemical residue is left over, usually sodium chloride and plastic sediments, giving the characteristic white color to these flats. Some salars contain, in the porous space of the sediments and the sodium chloride, an hypersaline liquid, we call it brine. In some cases, that brine contains lithium. There are hundreds of salars in the Puna Plateau. However, very few contain brine with lithium with any economic importance. We will try to find out why some salars contain lithium in the brine and others do not contain lithium or contain very little lithium. The 3Q project is one of the highest grade lithium brine deposits in the world. We have done extensive research to try to understand why this project has more lithium than many others. And we believe that our findings will allow us to better understand the origin of lithium in salt flats. Our story starts 25 kilometers north of the 3Q lake in the springs of the Salado River or Salty River. The origin of the Salado River is a series of hot springs coming out of a long north-south fracture zone. Water comes out of the fracture at 40 degrees C. We did chemical and isotope analysis and found out that the springs of the Salado River have the same composition of the snow and rainwater. This part of the Andes have large volcanoes that were active until a few million years ago, and the deep city roots of these volcanoes host magmatic chambers that are still hot and create an anomalous high geothermal gradient in the region. Water gets down inside the fracture zone and these fractures connect to the deep extinct magmatic chambers and the water gets heated up. Water flows back up the mountain because hot water is lighter than cold water. So the Salado River springs are basically heated fresh water with similar composition of melted snow. Will lead us back to the original question then, where the lithium came from? The river flows downstream. As it flows downstream, increasing size, getting up to 1,000 liters per second in volume. That is about 50% of the total volume of water getting into the Tres Quebradas Salar Basin. This river is a very important control of the chemistry of the 3Q Basin. As the river flows downstream, the hot water interacts with surrounding rocks in an extremely arid environment. Under these circumstances, hot water can dissolve some rocks. This process is called leaching and could be very intense depending on the temperature of the water and the composition of the surrounding rocks. One of the most common materials in the region is this white volcanic ash. It looks like loose sand today but it came out of the volcanoes a few million years ago and is today drifting by wind on many places of the Puna Plateau and is particularly common along the Salado River. Volcanic ash is formed by silica shards and in contact with hot water, this material is particularly reactive, more than many other rocks. The ash contain elements that get easily released into the water as the shards react with the water. We sample and analyze this volcanic ash and we found that it contains up to a thousand parts per million of lithium. That is a similar content to the lithium found in the 3Q project. We found the suspect. This could be one of the sources of lithium. How can we test this idea? We decided to use isotopes. The isotopic signature of the volcanic tuff is very distinct and quite different from the isotopic signature that you will find, say, in fresh water. 
So we decided to study the isotope signature of the different rocks along the river, the hot spring and the brine in the Salar. In our study, we tested several isotopes, but I want to show you this chart with the result of strontium isotopes. The hot springs, basically fresh water coming from snow, have the isotopic signature of strontium around 0.711. The volcanic ash has the isotopic signature of about 0.706, and the Trichy Lake has about 0.709. That is actually right in between. Very clearly, the lake or the brine in the lake seems to be formed by a mixing of hot springs, that is, fresh water, and volcanic ash. So here we have a suspect. These volcanic tuff have the lithium and the strontium isotopic signature that we find at the end in the Trichy Lake. This is the material that created our lithium hydrate deposit. After 25 kilometers going down the hill, the Salado River finally reaches the Trichy Lake. By then, the Salado River is rich in lithium and many other elements. It's a salty river, as its name states. Not even Vicuñas drink its water by the time it gets to the lake. The Trichy Lake is about 1,000 hectares in size. It's a very large lake, elevated at about 4,000 meters above the sea level. High wind, sand, and very arid weather makes evaporation extreme. Under these conditions, all the elements that come in the Salado River in solution start to further concentrate. They were originally leached out of the rocks with hot water, but now they are in a perfect environment for rich, extreme chemical concentration. This is a chart of elemental enrichment in a logarithmic scale. In light blue, we can see the chemical composition of the hot spring, and in black, we see the chemical composition of the 3Q lake down below. Boron increased its content 19 times, calcium 28 times, potassium 23 times, and lithium 30 times. So it's not just one element that gets concentrated in this process. Basically, all cations that were captured by the river along its trip from the hot spring get concentrated in the 3Q lake. So this is what we call the lithium machine. The combination of hot water running through reactive rocks, leaching mineral cell elements, and carrying all those elements to a high altitude lake where extensive evaporation further concentrate the metals, generating the lithium deposit. The lithium machine works every day. The sun removes the water from the brine. The brine gets further concentrated and some elements reach saturation. Sodium chloride precipitates, creating the characteristic white color of the salar. We estimate from mass balance calculations that the lake receives 3,000 tons of lithium carbonate every year, that is, day after day, year after year. We estimated that the minimum resource of the 3Q project is about 4 million tons of lithium carbonate, so these processes have been active for at least over 1,000 years. The TAF have been around over a million years, so probably the deposit of lithium is much bigger than we know so far. This is what we call an active mineral deposit. This is a deposit that is still in creation. Most lithium brine minerals deposits in the Plouna Plateau are fossil. They were created in the past, but not new lithium is being added today. The unique setting of the 3Q project gives us a great opportunity to study how lithium brine mineral deposits are formed. This unique setting allows us to understand how the hot waters have a very important role to play at leaching lithium bearing rocks in the Puna Plateau. We don't know if all mineral deposits have been created in the same way. However, the findings in this particular mineral deposit are surely applicable to many other deposits worldwide.